Hello students, drawings help you to understand a topic better and also help you with a better recall. Students, let's learn about the relations of shoulder joint by drawing a diagram. This is the pear shaped glenoid cavity. This is the glenoid labrum surrounding it. As you can see the glenoid labrum is interrupted superiorly by attachment of the long hair of biceps brachii. Surrounding all this is the synovial membrane. As you can see, the synovial membrane emerges out of the joint to form the subscapular bursa. Surrounding this is the capsule of shoulder joint. Let us now add the bones related to the shoulder joint. Here superiorly you can see the acromial process and here you can see the coracoid process. Connecting the two is the coracoacromial ligament. Immediately above the shoulder joint is the supraspinatus muscle. A little posteriorly here is the infraspinatus muscle and the teres minor muscle. Covering these posteriorly is the deltoid muscle. Similarly covering all of these superiorly too is the deltoid muscle. In front of the subscapular bursa is the subscapularis muscle and covering all of this is your pectoralis major muscle. Taking origin from the coracoid process is the short head of bicep and the coracobrachialis muscle here. Inferiorly, the joint is related to the long head of tricep and to the teres major. Let's now add an important nerve and artery that accompanies it. So, situated inferiorly to the joint is the axillary nerve accompanied by the posterior circumflex humeral artery and situated superiorly between the supraspinatus and the acromial process is the subacromial bursa seen here. Now, if possible, let us make the bursa dotted so that it looks, it can be easily recognized as a separate structure. Similarly, you can do the same for the synovial membrane as well. This allows the synovial membrane to be seen separately from all the other lines that you can see in the diagram. Let us now color this to complete our diagram. This my dear students is a completed diagram of relations of shoulder joint. Revise it once to help you to understand the relations well and you will be ready to answer any question on relations as well as actions of shoulder joint. Thus in this diagram you can see a centrally placed glenoid cavity surrounded by the glenoid labrum. Superiorly it shows the attachment of long head of bicep. All this is surrounded by dotted layer or synovial membrane, a part of which emerges out to form the subscapular bursa. The whole thing is surrounded by the capsule of shoulder joint. The shoulder joint is superiorly related to the supraspinatus, posteriorly to the infraspinatus and further posteriorly to the teres minor muscle. It is anteriorly related to the subscapularis and together they form the rotator cuff muscles around the shoulder joint. Posteriorly the shoulder joint is related to deltoid muscle, so also superiorly and anteriorly it's related to the pectoralis major muscle. Inferiorly it's related to the teres major and the long head of tricep. Separated by the axillary nerve and posterior circumflex humeral artery. The supraspinatus muscle is separated from the acromion process by a subacromial bursa. Connecting the acromial process to the coracoid process is a coracoacromial ligament helping to form the coracoacromial arch.